We have Platinum Spider-Man Remastered. Come on. There it is, B Greater. And we have Platinum Spider-Man Miles Morales. Be yourself, there we go. But now it was time to get that beautiful Platinum Trophy for Spider-Man 2. And the way that we actually get it to pop is insane. There's no way we just did that. We kick things off with arguably the greatest introduction to any video game ever, with an epic boss fight against Sandman. And here we get a taste of the combat, which is better than ever. Oh my god, this is smooth! Oh, that's sick. I just want to point out how cinematic this entire sequence is. There's literally a part where we get thrown from one side of Manhattan to the other and still manage to slingshot our way back like it was nothing. So it was pretty clear from the get-go that Insomniac were cooking with this one. But it doesn't stop there, as early on we get introduced to a brand new traversal mechanic, Web Wings. Oh, the Web Wings! Let's go! Pete and Miles are then able to perform the ultimate combo finisher to take Take out Sandman, putting an end to this epic boss fight. There we go, Spider-Man 2. Get fucking hyped. You're gonna need help. What a start to this game. Holy shit. That was the first of 42 trophies needed to get the plat. And we can separate the remainder of them into three separate categories. We've got miscellaneous feats, collectibles and side missions, and of course, the main story trophies. Speaking of, I will be going through the entirety of the story, which will include spoilers. Back on track, we get a trophy for changing our suit style, and then we find out that Pete has got the sack from his new teaching job. But hey, not all is bad as his best friend Harry Osborn is back and appears to be healthier than ever following his experimental treatment. A sentimental flashback mission and Rickroll later and we are back on Spidey duty as we find out that Scorpion is getting transferred out of the raft. This also turns out to be the perfect excuse for Miles to get out of an awkward conversation with his mother who tells him that she is dating someone new. Plot twist, it's Mr. Negative. She's dating Mr. Negative. As soon as we arrive, we find out that Scorpion isn't the only one getting transferred out of the raft. Okay. Um, Rio is not dating Mr. Negative. I can confirm. Maybe. Things start to go sideways when a band of mercenaries known as the Hunters decide to kidnap Martin Lee and Scorpion. And here we also get a good look at their leader, Craven the Hunter. We soon learn that Craven has come to New York to hunt down all the superpowered individuals. And holy shit, he is not messing around. <laughs> oh man, he is ruthless. Things do get worrisome when we find out that his next target is Felicia Hardy, aka Mummy, aka Black Cat. So naturally, we track her down and help her escape to France so that she can be with her girlfriend. Yes, she swings both ways, and I don't know why, but that makes me 10 times more attracted to her. We then catch up with Harry, who has started a new million dollar startup called the Emily May Foundation. Inspired by Aunt May and Harry's mum Emily, this company has the goal of healing the world through science and conservation. And to top it off, Harry offers Pete a job of being the co-CEO of the company, which is definitely one way to solve his whole unemployment problem. To celebrate, Pete, MJ, and Harry head to Coney Island, and of course the festivities are ruined by Craven's hunters, who would come to kidnap Tombstone. Amidst the chaos, one of the rides collapses, and just as Pete was about to lose his grip on this poor lady, this happens. Oh, oh shit! Yo! Yo, yo, I was not expecting that. So there you have it. It seems that Harry's treatment with the symbiote was a success. And now is he not only healthy, but also has acquired some super symbiote powers. And we get to see those powers on full display in the next mission. Because while searching for Tombstone, Harry rocks up as Agent Venom. Yeah, this was epic. Oh my god! What? Like, holy shit. Oh, 
With the help of Harry, we are able to clear out all the hunters and safely rescue Tombstone. But there's no time to rest because we learn that Dr. Kurt Connors has gone missing. And that's bad for two reasons. One being that he is in charge of Harry's treatment and the other being that he has the chance to turn into a giant man-eating lizard. We were able to track him down to an abandoned zoo where we get to play as everyone's favorite character, MJ. Yes, MJ missions are back and it feels weird to say this, but they're actually not that bad. She has finally discovered how her legs work, meaning that we can actually sprint now. And off the rip, we get to put people to sleep using a taser. While sneaking past the hunters, we learn that Craven has been unaliving all the super villains that he has captured and is planning on putting Dr. Connors to the same test by transforming him back into the lizard. Craven does end up getting his wish as he injects Connors with the lizard serum moments before Pete and Harry rock up. MJ and Connors try to get to an antidote, but of course it's too late as he begins to transform. And Big Ups Insomniac for giving him the comic accurate lab coat design. Anyway, the lizard is able to escape and Pete confronts Craven, which doesn't end well for him copping a blade straight through the gut. And just as it looks like Pete was about to see Aunt May again, the symbiote makes its way from Harry and attaches itself to Pete, saving his life and giving him the black suit. Oh my God, we have it now. Oh my God. <gasps> that was brutal. And there we go, a new suit. We finally have the symbiote. Let's go. Next, we have to try and track down Craven because he has the only sample of the antidote that can save Dr. Connors. And this leads us to a vodka filled hunter party where we are able to sneak into Craven's office. Once inside, we learn that Craven is dying of cancer and is looking to find a worthy adversary to give him a hunter's death. Following this, we are able to find Craven at a church, which was giving me mad shocker vibes. Also, I don't think I will ever be able to recover from the fact that we were robbed of a black suit v shocker showdown in this game. Anyway, we were able to yoink the antidote sample off Craven's neck and get away. We then rush over to EMF to meet up with Harry but are rudely interrupted by the hunters, who were clearly zooted off that Russian standard as they managed to crash land a helicopter inside the lab, pretty much destroying everything. But thankfully, right before the building went up in flames, we were able to make the antidote, meaning that all we have to do now is find Dr. Connors. Luckily, this won't be too difficult as he is a 10 foot fucking lizard. Anyway, we were able to track him down to Harlem where we have an epic chase sequence on the river but we weren't the only ones on Connor's tail as the hunters were toe to toe with us the entire time. After following the lizard into the sewers, we stumble into a secret Oscorp lab where we have our next major boss fight. Oh, he looks menacing. Come on, come on, come on. Get some hits in, get some hits in. Nice. Dodge, dodge. No! <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's safe to say the boss fights have been taken to a whole nother level in this game. Not only do they have multiple stages, but they also have an abundance of new attacks, which will keep you on your toes. Some of these require you to dodge, whereas others force you to parry. And failing to do so, or even mistiming them by a second, can result in you taking massive amounts of damage. Dodge. Get a few hits. Good parry. Good parry. And, oh, nice. He's nearly done. There we go. And just as we thought we had Connor's pin down, he gets away and starts rampaging through the city. But thanks to an explosive arrow from Craven, the lizard gets put down. Or so we thought. Round two, baby. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Got him in the corner. Where are you? Shit. And... Boom! Let's go! Come on, come on, come on! Dodge, dodge! What are you doing up there, pal? You can't escape me! Oh, we got him! And Venom Punch! Boom! And just like that, we were able to inject the antidote and get Connors back to his regular self. And after taking him back to that underground lab, he tells us all about the origin of the symbiote and how its discovery came at a cost. Oh 
my god, that's how he lost his arm. Connors then warns Pete about the symbiote and says that it needs to be destroyed. Destroy us? Yeah, you know when the us starts coming out, that's when shit's getting intense. Medicine, holy shit, complete, it shows you. That was nuts, what a boss fight. That was one of the hardest but most sickest boss fights ever. That was crazy. This is the point in the story where the symbiote really starts to take over Pete. And we see that in full display as the hunters have managed to track him down to Queens, where he pretty much goes on a rampage. Playing as MJ, we have to sneak past the hunters and try and save Pete from the symbiote. <laughs> Holy shit, that's fucking Venom, bro. Oh my, run! Luckily, MJ was able to get out safely, but the same can't be said for Miles, who was knocked out and captured by the hunters. And after waking up inside some sort of prison, I was fully convinced that we were about to have a boss fight with Craven. Am I about to fight Craven? Is that what's about to happen? Oh my god, I'm about to fight Craven! Whoa! No way! It's not quite Craven, but Miles having to face the man responsible for unaliving his father might just be the next best thing. Dodge. Up. Oh my god, let's go! Come on, come on, come on. It's all about dodging. We just gotta dodge here. Oh, good hit. And finisher! This has gotta be it. And then. There we go! The fight isn't quite over as we get transported into Martin Lee's negative reality, where Miles has to confront his demons head on. And whilst here, we learn a new ability called Reverse Influx, and using this would get us our next trophy. Overdrive. As Miles used Reverse Flux to pull six or more enemies together simultaneously. Nice! We then use this ability to get back to reality, where Lee asks Miles to kill him there and then. But instead, he does the exact opposite and launches him to the glass ceiling, allowing Martin Lee to escape. Another way complete no escape meanwhile pete has gone full bully mcguire being a complete dick to everyone and refusing to hand over the symbiote to harry who is slowly crippling back into his illness thanks to mr negative we know that craven is keeping miles at this old mansion and upon arrival we get to face off against the man himself oh here we go craven the hunter come here boy nice let's go little symbiote punch nice Boom. Oh my god. Oh, what? Oh, Jesus. Oh, my days. Oh, man, this is sick. I'm, I'm enjoying getting my ass beaten. What did he say? Oh. Hit him with that. Nice. Good parry. Let's go. Come on, come on. Yes. Sensational. Nice. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. There we go. Second stage, baby. Whoa! No! Oh my god. That scared the shit out of me. Boom, 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 boom. Venom punch. Nice. Oh man, that was intense. That was real intense. Things only escalate from here as we decide to feed into Craven's masochist fantasy by choking him out. But Miles rocks up just in time to stop us from killing Craven, and what happens next is crazy. What? Oh my god! Yes! 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 This is what we were asking for! Let's go! Come on, come on. Finish up. Oh, nice! Let's go! Yes! Come on! Oh, he's low, he's getting low. Finish up, we can finish him! Oh, sick. Oh, no. Oh, Jesus. No, no. Oh, what? Come on, Pete. No, no. Oh, my God. Look how close we got. Come on, Miles. You got him. Come on. We can do this. We can do this. Let's go. Come on. There we go. Oh, man. With the help of Miles, Pete was able to overcome the symbiote and rip it off himself. Oh, we're ripping it off. We're ripping it off. Rip that shit off, baby. The Great Hunt. 
That was unreal. That was so epic. I, just, I can't even explain how fucking hype that was. That was crazy. Following this, we get a call from Dr. Connors, who tells us to meet him at Oscorp so we can finally destroy the symbiote. But when we arrive, we aren't greeted by Dr. Connors. Instead, we run into Harry, who isn't too happy when we tell him that we're gonna destroy the symbiote. And this is when shit gets taken to another level, as the symbiote breaks out of its containment and reunites with its original host. <laughs> oh my god. No way we're fighting him. Yeah, Insomniac hit us with the pump fake. The ultimate they had us in the first half because we aren't going to be fighting Venom. We were going to be doing something even better. <laughs> no way. No, 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 no. Oh my God. We're actually going to play as Venom. We're actually going to play as Venom. Holy shit. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the destruction! Oh my days! <laughs> We're so big! Oh! <laughs> I could do this forever. I could do this forever. This is the best. This is just the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh! <laughs> Yo! This is hands down in my top three gaming moments of all time. Honestly, I've never enjoyed unaliving poor security guards more in my life. Anyway, after clearing out all of Oscorp, we find our way onto the streets of Times Square, where the hunters have come to join in on the festivities. But of course, this is the moment that our boy Craven has been waiting for. He has finally found a worthy adversary, an equal, someone who can give him his final hunt. Here we go. Oh my god. We, we are playing as Venom fighting Craven. Hunt Craven. Nice. Let's go, Venom. Let's go. Oh, oh my god. Eat him. Oh. Oh my days. We've nearly got him. We nearly got him. You should do it. There we go. Oh my god. He's gonna eat him. He's gonna eat him. <laughs> oh my god. That just happened. That just happened. Leave us alone. That's for complete. Don't be scared. But oh my god. This is the greatest game of all time. I'm convinced. I am fully convinced this is the greatest game of all time. Things go from bad to worse as Venom has gone around and created a bunch of nests around the city, which are turning civilians into symbiotes. And one of these just so happened to spawn in the subway, trapping Ganky and Miles's mom on a train. And while saving them from hordes of symbiotes, we managed to get a combat related trophy. Armed and dangerous. Defeat 100 enemies with spider arm abilities. Let's go. We are able to save Ganky and Rio, but our problems don't end there, as Harry has decided to give MJ a visit. And as soon as we arrive, he gives her his 19 inches, turning her into the symbiote scream, which means that we now have another boss fight on our hands. And I just want to say that holy shit, MJ took domestic violence to a whole nother level. Yo, what? This is going to be a, uh, a tough boss fight, I think. Whoa. And boom, 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 boom. Nice. Let's go. There we go. Nice. Fuck. Fuck. Oh, I just fucking choked. I just didn't know what the fuck I was doing at the end. Up we go. Up we go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Boom. Nice. I can pay a bill. Shut your ass up, bitch. Dodge. Dodge. Parry. Fuck, I didn't parry it well. Up you go. Come on. And boom. Dodge. Dodge. Up we go. This is it. This is it. 
But she's done. Just like Pete, MJ was able to overcome the symbiote, which netted us our next story-related trophy. We then meet up with Miles to help clear out City Hall, which has been overrun with symbiotes. We also learn that Pete still has some of the symbiote trapped inside him, and the only way to get it out of him was by getting assistance from an unexpected hero. Oh, Mr. Lee, bro! Miles and Martin Lee then head inside Pete's mind where they're able to purge the symbiote out of him, which also happened to unlock some new powers. Hey, yo, what? <laughs> Straight up anti-venom, bro, what? Hey, whoa, hold up. Antidote, defeat a symbiote that is under the effect of anti-venom status. Holy shit. Following this, Venom breaks into the underground Oscorp lab and steals the meteorite that the symbiote arrived to Earth in. Using this, he is able to venomize the entire city, causing symbiotes to run rampant. We then switch to Miles, who has designed a new suit for himself, which is straight up fugly. It's literally an ad for Adidas. Anyway, whilst clearing out the symbiote nest on this rooftop, we would get our next trophy. Yo, evolved. Defeat 100 enemies with evolved venom abilities. Let's go. It was now time for the final mission of the game. The ultimate showdown. The pinnacle of the story. And we're playing an MJ mission. You know what? At least she's OP as fuck. I mean, we can literally three shot the symbiotes with the blicky, which is kind of ridiculous. But that aside, our goal is to make it to the end of this tunnel and steal the meteorite. And once we do that, we can take it back to EMF and use the giant ray gun to destroy it. But before we do that, we have to face off against the big man himself, Venom. And just like most of the boss fights in this game, I got my ass handed to me. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs> gotta dodge. Gotta dodge. Gotta dodge. Nice. Let's go. We've nearly done his first stage. We can get a finisher in. Let's go. Defeat Symbios to charge anti venom. What the fuck did just. What the fuck did I just witness, bro? Let's go, Venom. Let's go, Venom. Dodge. Fuck! Come on. Holy shit! What the fuck? <laughs> It just grew wings! So Venom is obviously pissed that we're trying to destroy his space rock. So he pulls up to EMF to stop us. And with Pete out of commission, it was time for Miles to step up to the plate. Come on, let's go, let's go. And we got a gadget. Sound suppression. Nice. Let's go, get some hits. We can throw that. Let's go. This has got to be it. Come on. Let's go. Shit. Yo! 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 Woo! 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 Come on! Come here! Nice! Hit him! Hit him! Hit him! Let's go! Venom then takes the meteorite and starts flying away, which led to one of the most cinematic action cutscenes ever. This is cinematic as fuck! I love it. Eventually, we are able to retrieve the meteorite, but the victory is short-lived as Pete has to confront the facts that the only way to stop Venom was to take him down once and for all, killing his best friend in the process. The meteorite was destroyed, putting an end to the symbiote threat on the city. And just as Pete and MJ were mourning the loss of their best friend, Miles is able to come in and jumpstart his heart, bringing him back to the land of the living. But Harry is then quickly rushed to hospital where he is put into a coma. Norman pins the blame on Spider-Man for everything and utters the words all of us wanted to hear. Get the G serum ready. ASAP. Oh shit. Oh shit. We know what that means. We know what that means. We also find out that Pete is semi-retiring and wants to focus on being Peter Parker for a while. But we'll see how long that lasts, as it looks like the third game is gonna have both Doc Ock and the Green Goblin teaming up in what looks to be the final chapter. Kill the world. There we go. What 
a game. What a game. What a story. I'm like, I'm lost for words. That was, that was something else. With the story out of the way, it was time to focus on the remainder of the trophies. And to kick off the cleanup, we decided to tackle all the different collectibles and side missions that are exclusive to Miles. The first of which being the different tech stashes that the Prowler, aka Uncle A. Aaron, has left around the city. There we go, co-signing. Big ups, Uncle A.A. Ron. If you know, you know. Next, we have to give back to our community by completing the Cultural Museum side missions. Pretty much a bunch of musical artifacts had been stolen. And it turns out the person behind the stolen artifacts was actually the museum's main benefactor, Darren. Nobody likes Darren. Spider-Man, help me! I was just trying to get the stolen things back for the museum. Shut the fuck up, Darren. Eventually, we were able to retrieve all the artifacts and put on a massive gala for the people of Harlem. There we go. My community complete hard bop. Next, we had the Brooklyn Visions quest, which required us to do small side missions for our fellow students. And doing so earned us a new suit as well as a trophy. Brooklyn Pride, very nice. One question, how the fuck do they know that he's Puerto Rican? Throughout the game, we have also been snapping photos of interesting things around New York City. A lot like the landmarks in the first game. Anyway, this was the final one that we needed for the trophy. There we go, New York, New York. That is all the photo ops completed. Let's go. We then focused on completing all the Mysteriums around the city that the reformed supervillain Mysterio has tasked us with completing. This eventually led us to a trippy boss fight against the villain as well as our next trophy. Even though Craven is now six feet under, we still have to deal with the remaining hunters. And we can do that by taking down different outposts around the city known as blinds. After we investigate three blinds in a specific district, we unlock the location of a hunter base. And we have to take out all the bases for another trophy. One of my favorite new stealth mechanics in the game is the implementation of web lines, which allow us to string together our own spider web above our enemies and take them out silently. During one of these hunter blinds, we managed to get our 25th stealth takedown whilst perched on one of the web lines. Hey, slack line. That is for stealth takedowning 25 enemies. Sweet. After completing one of the hunter bases, we also got another spontaneous trophy. Hey, resourceful. What's that for? Collect a total of 10,000 tech parts. Yeah, all right, sweet. We take that. Nice. See, each time we complete a hunter base, we learn a little bit more about Craven's family and in particular, his children. And come the final base, we found out that his entire family is now dead, thanks to their own greed and quest for power. Seek and destroy. Well, that's, uh, that's family drama to a whole nother level, I reckon. Holy shit. And just like that, we'd completed all of Miles' trophies cleanup, meaning it was time to switch over to Pete. And the first thing on our agenda was chasing down all of Sandman's broken memories, which required us to fight against Sand people at these different crystals. After getting the final memory, all we had to do was drop off a small crystal statue to Sandman's daughter, which was a very wholesome moment. Grains of sand. All right, that's all the, the Sandman collectibles done. I was actually uh, wholesome as fuck. Next, we have to clear out the remaining symbiote nests around New York. And I specifically left this for Pete because with these anti-venom abilities, we are able to easily tear through the nests. And whilst clearing through one of them, we used our 25th symbiote ability whilst in symbiote surge. Hey, surge. That's 25, I think, anti-venom or venom surge abilities. Let's go. And soon enough, we were able to clear out the final nest, netting us the trophy. That should do it. There we go, exterminator. All the symbiote nests have been taken care of. For our next two trophies, we had to complete all the FNSM app requests. And to my surprise, there were only six of these total. But I can happily say that the quality of these six missions are, in my opinion, so much better than the ones in Miles Morales. And throughout the story, we were ticking these off as we played. Some of these missions included helping a blind lady with one of Craven's mech dogs, having a funny flashback mission as Pete, where we revisit his first day as a bugle photographer, and another one where we had to help a lady find her grandpa, who was simply revisiting the place where he proposed to his late wife, which was so bittersweet, but extremely wholesome. And the final one that we needed to tick off was helping a familiar face. Hey Howard, hey Pidgey, how are you both doing? 
See, Howard, for some unknown reason, has decided to let his birds free, as he's going on a new adventure. So, we happily oblige and escort the birds all the way to Queens, and when we return, we see that Howard has passed away, and has finally been able to start that new adventure with his wife. Oh, mate. Fuck. Shit. That's, that's deep, man. That's... I, mean, I always hang shit on Howard, but man, that sucks. That actually fucking sucks. Hey, we got two trophies, though. I mean, we got two trophies, though. This was such a sad but beautiful ending for our man Howard. I mean, I feel like a lot of us had a certain disdain for him because he kept losing his pigeons, but seeing him go definitely pulls on the heartstrings. Moving on, we started to tackle the flame side missions, which pretty much involve us tracking down and investigating a mysterious pyro cult. And whilst doing so, we run into our old friend Yuri Watanabe, who now goes by Wraith. Her ideology is strong quite far from Spider-Man's, as she really doesn't give a shit whether or not people die. This does cause some intense moments between the pair, which eventually results in a boss fight. See, Wraith wants to kill the leader of the cult who is called the Flame, but of course we are anti-killing, and if we couldn't piss Yuri off anymore, during our fight the Flame was able to escape. But at least completing this mission gave us enough XP to reach the max level. Damn, amazing. I think that's for reaching level 60. There you go. We were able to team up with Yuri one final time to put an end to the flame once and for all. But it didn't really go to plan, as we ended up with a train sitting on our chest. And this is when the flame reveals himself and tells us that his whole operation was just to get his hands on an Oscorp capsule that had some of the symbiote in it. And this does set up something pretty huge going forward. It shall bring truth, judgment. Hey, yo, he said it. Crimson Hour. Well, there we go. I'm pretty sure that just confirms Carnage for the DLC of Spider-Man 3. On the note of setting up villains for the future, we decided to track down the rest of the unidentified target drones. This would then lead us to a penthouse owned by the Chameleon, as well as our next trophy. Following this, it was time to complete all the EMF experiments around the city. And not gonna lie, I definitely had my doubts with these, because the research labs and lab projects from the first game, well, well, they fucking sucked. Honestly, they got so so stale so fast, but thankfully these experiments are actually really fun. Like half of them are legit Exterminator Simulator 2023, where you just have to go around and take out bee predators. And then there's another way you have to race around Central Park on your bike. And after completing all of them, we were rewarded with a new suit from Harry and our next trophy. Foundational. That's it. That's all the Emily May Foundation's done. And we got a little, uh, little beekeeper suit. Uh, I'm gonna take this off immediately because it looks kind of shit, but um, we take it. Thanks, Harry. Next, we had to track down all the spider bots around New York, and finding the final one was actually the last thing we needed to do to 100% complete all districts. Hey, Superior. What's that for? That is 100%ing all districts. Let's go. After this, we got a new objective marker, which gave us a Spider-Verse cutscene where Miguel was name dropped, which was pretty damn cool. Hey, funky wireless protocols. That was pretty sick. With everything pretty much completed, we finally had enough points and tokens to get all the necessary upgrades, suits, and gadgets. All right, and this is the final suit tech upgrade that we need, and we should get a trophy and... Yep, there we go, fully loaded. And there's another trophy to the max. That's for fully upgrading all the gadgets. There it is. That's all the suits purchased kitted out. There we go, guys. Now it was time for a few of the traversal related trophies, one of which requiring us to perform 30 air tricks before landing and another for, well, stuffing up. Hey, there we go. Hang 10. That's a 30 air tricks. Hey, and there we go, Splat. That is for stuffing up whilst trying to do some air tricks. Next, we had to make our way from the financial district all the way to Astoria by only using our web wings. But thanks to the wind tunnels, this was easily achievable. Hey, there it is. Saw. Let's go. We did it. We did it. Following this, we made our way to the cemetery where we had to visit and pay our respects to Aunt May's grave. You know what to do. There we go. And then we switch back to Miles to track down the science award that he and Finn won together. That's it right there. 
Just let go. All right, that's one more trophy. And then we got the plat, baby. That's right, one more trophy. And we have saved a weirdly awesome trophy for last. And that trophy is home run, where you simply just have to round the bases at the baseball stadium. Hmm, seems pretty simple, doesn't it? Well, we're gonna do it as Venom. Here we are, we are at the bowler's field playing as Venom. Yeah, this is this is a bit weird. I know you can do a free roam glitch and you can play as Venom. And I thought there's no better way to get the platinum trophy. But I do want to say I'm not the first person to do this and I'll link down in the description the video where I got this idea from. But all we have to do to get the plat is pretty much just run it like we got a home run and that should pop the plat. So let's do it. There's one. The first one, second one, third one, and we should be home. There we go. Home run. Why is Miles talking? I don't know, but that's got to be the plat. There it is. Dedicated. We just popped the plat as Venom, even though Miles is talking. But oh my God, what a game. Well, there you go, guys. Spider-Man 2's Platinum Trophy, all done and dusted. I hope you guys really enjoyed this one. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and check out this other video where I get another Platinum Trophy. And as always, guys, take care.